Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and I, of course, I'm not alone. No, you, you know how it goes by now. I'm joined by John and Zeon. Say hello in that order. Hello. Hello. My name is definitely Zeon. <coughs> well, that was terrifying. That Thank you for that, Zeon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, this is the last in a series of videos, a uh, series of three videos, where we talk about our favourite Nintendo Switch games. Five of them, in fact. Five each. This time it is my turn, and, uh, well, even though it's at the end now, these, these are only our personal favourites. They're not objectively necessarily the best, but the ones that we hold dearest. And just because there isn't a, video, a game included in this video doesn't mean it isn't in one of the others. So, Go and watch those as well. But anyway, I think it's time we started things off. Don't you? I do. That sounds like a pretty good idea. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So this is one that is definitely going to, I think, not necessarily divide people, but I think some people are going to go, huh? Yeah. Arms. I absolutely bloody adore arms. <laughs> and... It's, it's one of those games where I know a lot of people have kind of forgotten about it and they're like, is it even still relevant anymore? Yes, damn it, it is. I love ARMS so much, it will always be relevant. And I, I don't even play it that often anymore, but my god, I love it. It's just so blooming different. And on the point of it being dead too, we did an online Switch games video and we have proven, we, we have scientific proof that it is not dead. We found matches within seconds. And I think I'm actually one of those people who I love this game, but when I'm not playing it, I kind of forget about it. But whenever I return to it, I have such a blast. This is just such a special fighting game. There's nothing else like it out there. And I, I've honestly never really had a good chance to really sink my teeth into it. I love the <gasps> character designs. I know, I know. Maybe, maybe, over a, maybe over a little break here, we can all play it together at some point. Maybe you guys can make me dust off my copy that I've had on the shelf for uh, too long. You guys don't even want to know how long it's been on there. I, I'd, I'd be down for that. I mean, I, John, do you play motion controls or pro controller? You know, I started off playing motion, and it's a viable way, but I tend to lean more towards the pro controller. I still use motion. I genuinely find it better for me you know it's, i'm not saying it's the only way to play but for me yeah i genuinely think it's a better way to control i think it is it's genuinely really intuitive i have changed some of the button layouts and you can do that which is great another great thing about this game um so the things like rush isn't in isn't like on the shoulder buttons is that where it usually is i've got it on like the sl buttons i think <laughs> or sr because you don't do that accidentally except occasionally i do when i'm really into a game because I do genuinely really get into this game. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. It makes me slightly mispronounce so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so on the topic of fun, do you feel it's a more fun experience playing with motion controls versus just a pro controller or, or oh, I any do. Other, anything yeah, else? I really do. I think it's um, it's still great fun with a pro controller, but it's there's something about actually, you know, physically punching yourself and then actually landing that final hit that gets someone. And it does make you work up just a little bit of a sweat. It's not intense, but, you know, I think it is genuinely really massive. And this one, it, it, it only, this one only just inched out Ring Fit Adventure for me because that is, that is a hell of a game. But I could only include one motion heavy one in my head. So I did arms. And both of them will make you stronger than ever, both physically and mentally. Uh, I've got to say, ARMS has some, some of my favourite online of any fighter. The, the party crash system, just those floating faces that you sort of meet up with, and it just feels so good. I was playing ARMS around the same time as Street Fighter V, and ARMS' solution was far more elegant, and I don't really think a fighting game has really been as smooth as ARMS' matchmaking since. Smash Bros. I'd, I'd say arms is better at matchmaking than Smash. I, I, I was not, I was being condescending. <laughs> <laughs> I am so so pleased I was able to include this one on here. Yep, Hollow Knight. Oh my God, Hollow Knight. Honestly, in in my mind, in terms of Metroidvanias, this is th this is as close to I think a perfect Metroidvania as I've seen in years. It is just out and out everything about it, from the gorgeous art style to the wonderfully deep and interesting lore that, but it, it doesn't shove it in your face, you have to dig for it if you want. And the combat is great, it's hardcore, it's, you know, it's easily one of the most replayable games I think I've ever played. It's just all in all, and the music, oh my god, I nearly forgot to mention the music, oh my great goggly goodness, this is just... 
I, I, I just, all, my mind almost goes blank because there's so much to say that I love about this that I don't even know where to begin. Hmm. I was enjoying this game a lot until I got to the City of Tears. I was like, okay. Now I love this game. It was that moment where the music hit in, the rain was going against the window, everything was just gelling together so well. The Hollow Knight became one of my favourite games, probably of all time. Uh, it's just delightful. And I love too that it makes you kind of explore your surroundings before giving you the info, because you buy maps in this game. So unlike other Metroidvanias, you really are taking in your surroundings before you're really given any info about it. I think that's such a clever design de design decision. It is a really like magical and yet dark experience, almost like a like a 2D cutesy version of Bloodborne, if you will. And it, it's funny too. A, a while back, I remember us three were talking, and Alex was saying that he wished that he had kind of like a retro game or something that he could really tie himself to. I feel like Hollow Knight is your game, Alex. When, whenever I think of Hollow Knight, you are the first person that I think of. So you you have that. <laughs> Well, I'll I'll take that. That's very that's very nice because yeah, it is just it is just flat out one of the best games, and it's so cheap. I'm just I just oh, it's like it what is, is it, it really like twelve is. quid on the eShop? Not even that. It's cheaper than some Fortnite costumes. You could you could instead of buying Fortnite stuff, just play Hollow Knight. Buy buy your friends copies of Hollow Knight too. That's fine. That's that's a better use of your money. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean like what is it like? You could buy. An entire game, Hollow Knight, or you could buy, like, you could play as Kratos in Fortnite, which is just a skin. Buy Hollow Knight! Come on! For goodness sake, what are you doing with your lives if you're not playing Hollow Knight? It's a big game, too, right? Do, do you know how many hours you'd probably get out of something like Hollow Knight? Oh, my lord. Um, I don't know myself, but I do know because um, it was kind of a revelation because my partner also really loves Hollow Knight. And she found out that she had played, like, I think it was, like, 80 hours of the wow. game Woof. which is frankly ridiculous considering i wouldn't say she's big into her games now but when we first met she only kind of dabbled so yeah the fact that she sunk 80 hours into a single game that cost you know like less than 12 pounds insane mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. insane team cherry take as much time as you like with silk song because you've got a hell of a lot to live up to <laughs> uh-huh a lot of people might hear 80 and think that's really daunting, but you don't have to spend that long. Like, this oh, this God, can easily no. be finished in 20, 30 hours. It's just, if you really want to dive in, there is so much more to sink your teeth into. Well, to give you an idea, I, there's also, like, you can do a speedrun of it, and it's not like a daunting speedrun. The game encourages it. So you can do the full game in not a huge amount of time at all. It's, there's, there's, there's too much, too much to talk about with Hollow Knight. We need to move on. Oh, it's an impossible paw. It's an impossible paw. It's The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I went, I bought this game when I bought my PS4, which was not that long ago, to be brutally honest with you. I did, you know, it was just the Game of the Year edition for the PS4. I bought it and I was yeah, just... I started getting into it, but it didn't really grab me properly. I still wasn't entirely used to, like, the controller and the controls and things like that. And then it came out on the Switch, which, for one thing, is just frankly bonkers. And since then, I've dropped about 100 hours into this game, on and off, just dipping in and out. And it is just one of those... It, it, I still am baffled at how deep and immersive even just the side quests are. Like, I'll be playing and I'll have to sort of think... And I have to think to myself, is this part of the main mission? Is this something I'm supposed to be doing? Or is, is this just something that I've stumbled upon? Because it's fleshed out three characters in that time. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> oh, and it... it the fact that it's on the Switch and it runs as well as it does. I don't even care that it doesn't look as good as the PS4 version. I always play the Switch version. I think only when you put them side by side do you really see how jarringly different the Switch version is. But when you're just in the midst of playing it yourself, I don't really think about it. You just kind of get overtaken by all the surroundings and the atmosphere. And yeah, it does look blurrier. But once you're involved, you don't really, you don't really consider that. No, it's, it's just like the fog descends in your mind and you just forget and you just... Everything else is so engrossing that the graphics are kind of secondary. Yeah, I remember really appreciating how well the colors popped in the games too. Like, the, I mean, it was, it did look a little blurry at times, but my gosh, it just looked like a piece of art at times. And even on Switch, yeah. And with, with a game this massive being on the system is insane. What's crazy too is when the PlayStation 4 version came out, I remember going into the bog and uh, the frame rate dipping to like the, to like the 15 FPS. And um, they've, they've patched it a bunch since then. But it's crazy that the Switch can still 
uh, get better results than the PS4 did at launch, which is insane. It's just, it's an absolutely incredible port, just in every single way. And it's still, it's a game that I continue to enjoy and will continue to enjoy probably for years to come because it's so blooming massive. I still haven't done the main campaign because I've reached that point. Uh, I'm not going to spell anything out for anyone who hasn't played it, but if you have, you know what I'm talking about. I've reached that point and I was like, no, nope, I'm doing a 180 and doing as much as I can before I go any further. It's just, it's just intoxicating. <laughs> From the impossible port to the impossible port, if only for the licensing thing because it's owned by Microsoft. Yes, Cuphead. My god, Cuphead. I, I For the longest time I'd seen stuff about it, you know, it was on Xbox. I do have an Xbox One, I use it for rare replay occasionally and not a lot else. Um, but I, you know, I saw Cuphead and I was enthralled by it, but I never really got into it. Always kind of hoping it would come to Switch. And then it bloomin' did, and it was worth every second of the wait. This is probably one of the most beautiful games on the Switch. The hand-drawn art style that's, you know, Hollow Knight has a beautiful hand-drawn art style, but Cuphead takes it to an entirely new level with this wonderful classic animation with all the sort of the stretch and uh, what is it the stretch and squash that they call it mm -hmm. and the classic 1920s it's just and the gameplay itself is fun but i feel like almost the gameplay is secondary to be brutally honest because you almost play the game just so that you can see more of the gorgeous animation they're all like pillars of each other no none of them can exist without the other and i think the most important thing is nothing is compromised like, you look at other Switch ports, like Doom, it's, it's still a lot of fun, but clearly, like, the frame rate is, is half of what it is on other consoles, it's blurrier, whereas Cuphead, that looks more or less exactly the same as it does on Xbox. Cuphead is one of those games that, you know, being on an Xbox, I'm very much like you, Alex, where I, like, I have an Xbox, I have a few games, including Rare Replay, and I never touch them, and someday I will, um, but having Cuphead just on the Nintendo Switch just gives us the, the chance to actually go and play it. And, uh, and it's so nice to just be able to have that option, to be able to take it on the go. And it, yeah, and like John said too, it's so nice that nothing was compromised with this port either. So there's really no reason to not play it on Switch. Yeah, I just, I just everything about it just gels so beautifully together and it is an uncompromised port. The combat is just as frenetic. Everything is just so satisfying. And it's one of those games where it really, it really genuinely challenges you. And I have com I have played it to completion. My god, I was genuinely tearing my hair out. Well, not genuinely, but figuratively tearing my hair out when it came to the devil. Like, it is a really, really tough boss battle. But I love it. I absolutely love it. It is just a game like no other. I love it to death. Oh, you knew it had to be in here, yeah. If, if you were worried at all that we weren't going to include this game, well, there's egg on your face. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I, I, where to even begin? You take one of the most well-regarded series of all time and you turn so much of it on its head and you change so much of it and yet you still manage to make it. One, one of, if not in my opinion, I think it's probably the best game in the series. I think Breath of the Wild, if I had to pick a favorite game of all time, I genuinely think it would probably be Breath of the Wild. I've got such strong memories of playing it on the launch day, you know, midnight and everything, going back. I went to my uh, partner's mum's house because we weren't living together at the time. Uh, we stayed over there and um, very kindly allowed me to use the TV even though everyone else was asleep. And I just played Breath of the Wild for like three hours. Just, just running around playing Breath of the Wild, feeling guilty because my partner couldn't see it as well. <laughs> Uh, absolutely magical. There, there is nothing that even comes close to it, in my opinion, from an open world point of view. The landscape is perfect. It is big, open, broad. It's not busy, but it's not barren. I, uh, I, I just, I just, someone else talk. If this weren't on your list, it would absolutely be on mine. This is, this is probably my favorite game too, and there's so much that I love. I think one of the most important things, though, is every single time I boot it up, there is something new I find. And I've played this game to 100% completion. I have every Korok seed, I've done every shrine, I've done everything you could possibly do. Yet, recently, we found out that you can feed squirrels acorns, and you can feed sheep carrots. Like, it's nuts how much just is just flowing out of this game. 
Um, and I'm, I had kind of open world fatigue when this came out. I, I was bored of the structure of, you know, t speaking to an NPC, tell you, like, tell you to go somewhere, you do their quest, then you come back and just rinse and repeat. That was boring to me. But this game came along and really showed me what an open world could be. Because it's not following um, point, point A to point B the entire time. It's making your own point A to point B, then making your own point C. It's just whatever you want to go, whatever you want to do is done by you. And that's exactly what I want from this genre. Uh, to this day, no open world game has- they, they've tried to take elements from Breath of the Wild, but no game has come even remotely close to me. Yeah, Breath of the Wild really is one of- it, it hands down is just one of the best Zelda games. If you take it and you compare it to the original Zelda, there's so many different elements that have just been carried over and have grown and evolved into something much bigger. And and like you, like both of you said, you can constantly go back to this game and find new things. I, I, pers I, I personally have still never, I haven't 100% of the game. I still have like Terrytown to go do, but because <gasps> I, 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 I know, I know. Terrytown is like, I know. that's like the first thing I do every time I do a new playthrough if I can. I haven't been playing with a strategy guide at all. I don't even think I used like any online walkthroughs, but just just so that way. Yeah, exactly. And it's such an organic experience. And and I I know like John, you said that you've you've 100% of the game and there's still things to find, but for me, I'm so excited that, you know, cuz People talk about sometimes how, like, if, you know, they'd love to have their memory wiped so that way they could go and replay a video game or watch a movie or read a book again for the first time. And for me, Breath of the Wild, every time I go back to play it, it feels like I'm playing it again for the first time with all these new things still kind of lingering around for me. Um, and yeah, it's just such a magical experience. And it, it, it captures the original, the original essence of Zelda so well. And no other Zeldas really do that. I, th I think for me, going to what you said about the original Zelda, is it was so bold of them to have this huge open world game and yet have the waypoints at a, a bare minimum. Like, the, so many of the things that you do, the side missions, the side quests, whatever you want to call them, you speak to someone and they will mention, you know, sort of a tale or, you know, sort of a something that their mother told them about, you know, sort of three, three peaks coming together or three, you know, three kings on mountaintops and you've got to find three trees on three mountaintops and you look down them and then all of a sudden a shrine of it, it, it doesn't spell anything out for you. It forces you to think and it's never too difficult and it's never too easy. It rides this beautifully perfect line that is so hard to do and is so constantly missed by so many other games. I, I just, I, I just don't know how they did it. It's, it's, a, it's just so bloody good. What I love too is you can turn the HUD off and the game I is still so I do that every time. So I do that every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but other games, you can't do that. Like, in Skyrim, for instance, if you turn the HUD off, all of a sudden, quests don't make sense anymore. Because you, you speak to NPCs, and they say, like, Oh, go to Temple! And then and then just a <laughs> waypoint comes up on the screen. But if you like, they don't tell you where to go. Like, so where is the Temple? I don't know! <laughs> like, that's, that's exactly what other games are like. But it's Breath of the Wild. Uh, the entire game is just so well made that it makes sense. You know exactly where to go. There, there, are, there, are, there are signs around the world pointing you to towns. You can literally craft your own journey and your own line and never get lost. And if you do get lost, that's a great thing because when you get lost, there's even more to discover. I think um, it was actually, of all people, um, Dunkey, video game Dunkey. Uh, he just said something about Breath of the Wild and I thought it was so, so perfect. It was basically when you play Breath of the Wild and you get off the Great Plateau, which is the right direction? And the, the answer is, whichever way you go, you are going in the right direction because there is always something at the end. There is always something to do on that path. And I think that's so right. There is no wrong way to go. There's always something, even if it's just something small like a Korok or even just a reference to a previous game. There is always something around every corner under every stone. And yet at the same time, the game has these big open vistas. It's not cluttered like that's something that I felt about um, Immortals Phoenix Rising is that I could never really fully know where I was because everything was kind of, you know, sort of condensed and micro. 
whilst in Breath of the Wild everything's so huge, everything's so open, so you can always see where you need to go. And if you're in the, a place and you need to go somewhere else, you can pretty much see like a deadline to it, or at least something that alludes to, you know, sort of, oh, you need to go between these, you know, these two peaks that are meeting, and you get there, and then you can see it. Just, it's just so perfectly crafted. There's no skill tree either. Every move that you have available, every action, is right there from the start. So if you want to, you can literally go to a guardian and just parry their lasers. And that's tricky when you first start the game. But now I'm at a point where I can literally parry any laser without- that timing is just down now. So if I start a new file, I can go down to Hyrule Castle and just take down some guardians instantly. And I love that you can do that. Like, you're never really handicapped at any point you can do anything whenever you want to. It reminds me in many ways of something like Monster Hunter where the most important thing is not necessarily your equipment by- yeah, your equipment is a big help, don't get me wrong, but the most important thing is your knowledge of the game and your knowledge of the enemies. Like in Monster Hunter, you can have the best armor in the game and still get taken down by a great Jaggy, but you know, you can- in Breath of the Wild, y you can go up to Ganon with a pot lid and win. It's- it's just- it's- Ooh. It's a good game. It, it is a good game. <laughs> Would you agree, Zion? Is it a good game? Oh, it's one of the best games. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Better than arms. <laughs> no, in my opinion, it's the best game on the Switch. Probably the probably in, in, for me, probably the best game that's ever been released. Frankly, like it's just it's just amazing. Don't think I need to say anymore. I won't. I won't! It's even better than Puyo Puyo Tetris. You too. better believe it. Now we just need to wait for Breath of the Wild sequel. <laughs> well, there you have it. Those are my personal, uh, after some consideration and some, you know, making sure there's no crossover with everyone else, my five favorite Switch games. Um, did you enjoy this series? Uh, if you haven't seen the others, please do go and check them out. They're good fun. I'm in them as well. Um, <laughs> just uh, thank you to John and Zion for uh, chatting with me about these games. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you, uh, I don't know, interact with that subscribe button in a fanciful and fun way. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, wow.